First, want to uh, uh, just uh, tell everybody how much I appreciate uh, recruiting coordinator Ryan Dorchester, who's uh, in the back here for the job that he's done on on uh, getting this uh, class together. He's done a tremendous job, and he's celebrating his birthday today. So happy birthday, Ryan! Uh, the rest of the staffs and attendants here that you guys can get with some of these guys. A lot of these guys, several of these guys are. Uh, first time you've had available uh, access to be able to talk with these guys, but uh, just commend the staff on the job that they did of getting uh, uh, this class together. If you look at the dynamics of it, you know, we've got 25 guys in the fold right now. Uh, seven of them are already on campus, so we've actually been coaching uh, seven of these guys, um, you know, already. Uh, Shavis Rollins, uh, Dreamus Smith, Wendell Smallwood, DeKill Shorts, Kevin White. Um, Hodari Christian and Malik Greaves are already on campus and doing a good job for us right now. So uh, we're treating them just like we're treating every, everybody else that's uh, that's been here, whether it's for a year or three years. Uh, so those guys are doing a good job. Uh, uh, the thing the thing about this class that stands out to me probably a little bit more than anything is is we we got these we went we went to 15 different states to uh, to get these guys. You know, if you look at what happened last year, it was. Uh, you know the surrounding states and, and, and down south a lot. Uh, one of the things that we wanted to focus on a little bit this year was uh, just trying to get some more guys from the surrounding states. Uh, you know, we got four kids out of Pennsylvania, both two from Western and two from Eastern Pennsylvania, three from New Jersey, uh, three from Ohio, uh, three from Georgia, two from Florida, and then one each from the states of West Virginia, Texas, Mississippi, California, Delaware, Kansas, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Maryland. That's a lot of travel time, and it's not easy to get anywhere, you know. So these coaches have been doing a heck of a job, of uh, you know, it, you know, we'd come back for recruiting weekends, and then Sunday we'd hit the road and and be traveling all over the country. And you know, you get a kid from, you know, from uh, like a Devonte Henry from from who's from Oklahoma, but out in Arizona. I mean, that's that's a lot of trips out to out that way to be able to go out and get those things. So it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of money. Uh, truly appreciate the the job that the guys did and the, the support that we have from the administration from uh, from a recruiting standpoint to be able to to get out there and, and make this happen from a booster club standpoint um, you know the 1100 club is important to us because it takes a lot of time and money to be able to get to all these places to be able to fill your class out so um, you know just uh, excited about all that so uh, as far as uh, specifically um, you know as far as what we're looking for uh, we made a strong emphasis defensively of of getting guys that can rush the passer, you know, and and you know everybody was like your your woes defensively were were pass defense. You better go out there and you better sign as many corners as you possibly can. Well, that's a very uneducated statement, you know. You better find D linemen to be able to uh, rush the passer. Well, that's an uneducated uh, statement as well. Uh, what we really wanted to do, which was something that was deficient uh, with what we were doing last year defensively, uh, and we also lost uh, Josh Francis and, and Terrence Garvin to graduation. I mean, we weren't very deep at those positions at all, and they're gone. So that was, that was a need. And uh, when you add guys like Brandon Golston from, from, from uh, Georgia Military, mentioned Devonte Henry from Arizona Western, uh, Don Trill Hyman, uh, who, who, who Coach Mitchell got out of uh, Mississippi, uh, these guys are, are pass rushers. They're long. Uh, they're able to get to the quarterback. Marvin Gross from over at Dunbar, uh, or, or, you know, can rush the passer. Uh, outside linebacker type guys, even along the lines of of uh, Jeremy Tyler from Atlanta, uh, Isaac McDaniel from down in South Florida. These are these are safety type bodies that are going to be tremendous. And uh, you know, from a, a, a nickel standpoint. Uh, that that is something that was uh, what, what we're after defensively, and I think we uh, handled all those those needs. Um, you know, can't don't want to uh, leave out Al Rashid, uh, who's uh, from uh, New Jersey. Physically, he's probably as uh, dynamic as we've seen. Would probably stand uh, if if you put him with our whole team right now, you wouldn't be able to tell that he was a new kid. He's physically pretty good. Um, from a special team standpoint. Uh, you know, we wanted to get out and coach the force did a great job of, of identifying Nick O'Toole, who's a junior college kid out of California, who's uh, his upside is, is is unbelievable. I mean, he's a big six three, six four kid that that has game experience that will be able to come in and w with Coach the force being able to work with them, that gives us a, a scholarship punter in addition to uh, Josh Lambert, who redshirted last year as a kicker, 
and uh, John DePalm as, uh, as a deep snapper. So we got three guys on scholarship that we feel good about, not only next year, but they're all young and, and will be able to help us for years to come. Uh, offensively, uh, ended up getting 13 guys. Um, you know, the, the biggest thing offensively, you know, run, running back uh, last year, we just had some problems from a depth standpoint, as, as we all know. So being able to add Dream of Smith and, and Wendell Smallwood and Eli Wellman, uh, that, that's going to give us a tremendous amount of depth at that position. Then you obviously throw in uh, Dustin Garrison, you know, with, with Bowie and Clay. We got some bodies. We got more bodies at that position that we've had since we've been here. So I uh, feel, feel good about that from an offensive line standpoint. You know, excited about uh, getting those guys in here. Marcel Lazar, Tyler Tezano, Stone Underwood, and Grant Lingelfelter. Just, you know, from an from a O-line standpoint, if you're not adding four to five a year, then from a depth, your depth standpoint, you're, it's going to end up catching up to you. Uh, so having a lot of those guys be able to come in to give us, I think, what makes 15 bodies on the offensive line right now. Uh, Coach Biedenbo's yelling at me in the back there because he felt like we should add three or four more. Uh, never can have enough offensive line. But uh, I, I like where we're at from a depth standpoint. We've got to establish some starters there, which is what spring practice is all about. Uh, you know, but the, probably the biggest need offensively is, is just playmakers on offense. When you lose you know, all your production at a receiver standpoint with Tavon and, and uh, Studman and JD, I mean, you better go out and you better get some guys that have that kind of ability. And uh, you know, I think we did that with adding five guys. You got three junior college players. Uh, Kevin White's already on campus, and he's a grown man. I uh, look forward to coaching him. Uh, Dekeel Shorts is on campus, and he's a grown man. Uh, is is adjusting to, to college uh, quickly, uh, and and, the, and then the new guys, which are all, you know, kind of, you know, I don't want to place them in the Tavon Studman category, but they're they're five eight, five nine, five ten guys that have just a tremendous amount of twitch. Uh, Mario Alford, looking at tape, is uh, is is dynamic as as I've seen. Uh, it, you know, can it just flat out can run. Uh, Ronald Carswell can can run away from people. Um, and, and then uh, the, the last guy that we ended up getting here is Shelton Gibson, who uh, on tape is, is extremely, extremely talented and extremely hard to tackle. So you talk about adding three guys starting in, in June that when we throw the ball to them, as you know that we're doing, we just get them the ball in space. Uh, they're able to make people miss and go score. Uh, so, you know, whether, <coughs> whether the current guys on campus right now can, can hold those guys off is going to be fun to watch in camp. We'll coach the guys that we have on campus right now, uh, and then just we'll be anxious to add these guys and, and throw them into the fold as far as uh, you know, being able to find out what we're going to line up for uh, in, in September of 2013. So that, that's kind of my thoughts on it. Uh, you know, uh, I will uh, open this up for some questions as far as some specifics, but that's just kind of my general thoughts. Ed, I know you're going to go ahead and go first. <laughs> Big group of junior college guys. Uh, if we could talk about that, the importance of bringing them in and, and how their experience already is going to help them transition. In. Yeah, uh, it, it's something that we've talked about for quite a while. You know, and, and identifying those guys is not easy. You gotta, you gotta spend a lot of time. You know, identifying the guys, making phone calls, and then going and seeing them and seeing if you're, the, you're the, if they're your type of guys. You know, and and and, and you know, one thing that I've seen change in in and college football is the amount of junior college kids that are being recruited. Uh, you know, there, there's been <coughs> my, in, in my years at Texas Tech and, you know, even Houston and Oklahoma State, I mean, it, it, wouldn't, be, um, it wouldn't be unlikely not to sign any junior college players. Uh, and if you look at what's happening this year, uh, a lot of people are, are, are going after junior college players. And we went after a bunch and, and weren't, weren't able to get some of them. And then we're able to uh, land nine, which is still a pretty good number. I, I don't think anybody would have been happy to to add 25 of them, you know. So you got to identify some guys, but uh, that you that you have needs for, and you don't want to you don't want to bring guys in that that you don't have a need for them. And, and we got a need for those those guys that, you know, we felt like at running back to get a guy that's experienced, the seasoned as Dreamus, and and then from a receiver standpoint, obviously we got zero per production coming back so we needed to add I mean the oldest guy on our receiving core right now is Kevin White I mean you know other than that we got a bunch of freshmen and sophomores that are that are going to be out there so it adds experience there Stone Underwood we have a need at center uh, he's a guy that's that's a nasty guy that that uh, has played a lot of football here in the last uh, two years so you know and then like I mentioned defensively we needed pass rushers and to get 
<clears throat> some grown men, you know, these guys are 6'5", 6'4", 6'5", 6'6", that physically will be able to, uh, you know, be able to compete in the Big 12. So th those guys need to come in and play right away. Otherwise, we wouldn't have went the, the junior college route. <laughs> You have some needs at tackle. Did you look at some longer guys? I know that's sort of a, something Coach Bebo likes as longer guys, but did you have to get some tackles in this class? Well, it, it, it uh, you know, probably the more important from a game ready standpoint was interior guys. You, you, I mean, we lost four of our top, top five in, inside guys, right? So, you know, the, from a tackle standpoint, having, you know, having uh, basically our starters coming back, you know, you got Spain coming back, you got Fight coming back. Uh, Eggers played tackle. Uh, Mark Glowinski uh, redshirted. You know, so we felt more, we felt better about the returning guys coming back at tackle. Um, you know, so we wanted to add some game ready guy, guys, and, and, and Stone should be game ready, and, and Tyler should be game ready. Uh, Tyler Tezno is a, is a physical, thick kid. I know he's a high school guy, and you can't count on high school guys to come in and play on the old line, but from a physical standpoint, he's he could potentially be ready. Uh, Marcel Lazard is an enormous person, and uh, you know Grant uh, Lingelfelter is a guy that's going to be. I mean, he's six five, and he's going to grow into his body. So there's two potential tackles for the future. You feel? I mean, you you campaigning for Bill over here? I mean, he's he wanted four or five more scholarships. So it's. <laughs> <laughs> Safeties and linebackers that could potentially move other places when they come in in the fall. How quickly do you, or what process do you have to go through to identify, hey, this guy might be inside, outside, buck, star, move around, how, how, especially for the JUCOs? Yeah, you don't, I mean, their, their bodies are changing too. Uh, you, you know, Devontae Henry's uh, 205, 210 pounds right now. I mean, you know, what's he going to be like in two years? I mean, the sky's the limit for a guy like that. That all those body types, all those tall, long, lean body types, I mean, you don't know what they're going to end up being, whether they're high school guys, whether they're junior college guys. You don't know how they're going to keep maturing. So, you know, you just try to add as many bodies as you can. You let uh, nature take its course. You let them lift and eat and get big and mature and grow older, and you never know what they're going to end up. You know, your, your, your goal eventually is just to get your best players out there. But, uh, you know, being in the Big 12, knowing what defenses do against us offensively, you're, you're looking at a lot of nickel and a lot of dime packages going in. So our, our base defense might not have, you know, uh, a, a, a ton of those lighter guys out there at times. Uh, it just depends on what they're facing, you know. But you're always going to be facing a bunch of pass situations, regardless of who you play. And then in the Big 12, you may be playing against that type of an offense 66% of the time to where you need a bunch of guys that can rush the passer. and move guys down and play them at end or, you know, or move safeties down and play them at outside linebacker. They do best and who the best guys are and put them out there. Not to discount the role your, your previous assistants played in the recruiting process, but the newer guys who did come in at a pretty pivotal time for you. Can you talk about them and, and kind of the role they played throughout? Well, there, there's, uh, you know, you, you always take into consideration what, what guys bring to the table from a recruiting standpoint, from a, geography standpoint uh, that that that's that's half the job you know and it for and all these guys do a great job of, of, of uh, coaching in uh, you know and getting out there recruiting so and in, in, in identifying what we needed to have happen I mean that was <coughs> part of the reason why some of these guys were hired I mean we know Tony Gibson's a, 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 tr a tremendous recruiter and he's got tremendous ties and uh, not only the uh, Pennsylvania area but also across the country and you know, Lonnie Galloway has done some great things for West Virginia. You know, already, you know, already recruited some guys, and will pay dividends in years down the road. And and um, you know, Brian Mitchell's uh, a guy that I've I've seen recruit, and and I was able to get in there with some of the connections that he's had, and make a little bit of a difference as well. But you know, those guys, in addition to all the rest of the guys that we got here, are going to identify, you know, what areas they're going to be in, which we'll talk on. We'll talk later about that, and. And uh, be able to get in, and, and 2014 recruiting starts basically today. These guys have been on the phone with a bunch of prospects in 2014, and I know everybody thinks we take a couple weeks off after signing days over, but uh, you know the, the recruiting thing never ends. So they've already been on the phone with a bunch of 2014 recruits, and 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 uh, we'll, we'll we'll get started on that. You know, probably going into the night tonight. There are a couple more players you could have in the class, or you, everybody in that list is everybody that's coming. 
Well, it's it's uh, it depends how things shake out. You know, we're 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 still uh, we're still actively pursuing a couple of guys for a variety of reasons. You know, you guys know if, unless they're signed up, I can't talk about any of that. So, uh, we're we're still actively recruiting a couple of guys and still have a couple of spots available. Whether we whether we fill those with with current guys that we're recruiting or wait and see what shakes out. You know, after signing day, things shake out, and we might identify a couple other guys that we want to bring on board. We might want to bring a couple of transfer guys on board. I mean, there's some, uh, we're, there's a couple of spots that we have out there to be able to fill. Uh, we'll, we'll evaluate that as a staff and make the best positions possible. <coughs> what are your numbers right now? How many of the guys that were in early count towards last year, how many spaces do you have left right now? I think three went back. I think three went back. I'd have to look at it for sure. I, I, I know at one point our target was about 27, 28, somewhere in there. <coughs> so three guys go back. Uh, you know, we, we've had a couple of guys leave the program scholarship-wise. Uh, you know, Marge has transferred. Uh, Troy Gloucester has, has decided to graduate early, uh, which opened up a couple of spots. But it's, it, we're really still at that point where it's a little bit more important to hit your initials than, than it is, you know, overall hitting the 85. We're not going to hit our 85. And, and, and it's because of the initials is, is the reason why. So I think we're one more – this this recruiting class, we've got to get all these guys qualified, get them in here. Uh, and then we, we don't have many seniors for next year. You know, so you don't want to just, you know, fill up just to fill up. You, you, you want to be able to get the best quality people in here to be able to – um, you know, have guys on your on your on your roster that can win your football games. So, it's going to take one more before we really truly max out to where we're at that 85 number prior to hitting our our initial number. So, this year it's about initials. Next year it's about hitting the 85. With the way junior college recruiting has evolved, is that something you guys are going to look at on an annual basis to try to get more guys? <coughs> Yeah, it, it's about getting the, the the best guys. I don't think next year it's going to be as important. Uh, and, and again, you know, once the, once recruiting day is over, you, you 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 get focusing on your current 2013 team. You know, it, it, the recruiting is important. It's our it's our our lifeline to what we do. Um, you know, but but player development is pretty daggum important too. I mean, you got you got to make sure that you're getting these guys buying into the program and. You know, and, and, and getting better on a daily basis when it comes to how they're acting, <coughs> how they're acting socially, you know, how they're doing academically, you know, how they're doing athletically, making sure they're doing everything that they can be doing to get be getting bigger, faster, stronger, and smarter every single day. You know, so that that's that's probably a little bit. At the end of the day, it's a little bit more important than what the actual recruiting is. Um, you know, so what what address that? That's that's a year to year thing. Players have those have the ability to do those other things just on the field. How does that impact how you evaluate recruits? I mean, everyone watches film. What do you and your staff try to do to see if they've got that drive, that determination, all those other things you're talking about? Well, there's only so much time you can spend with them. I mean, you can call them, and you know maybe they do or maybe they don't answer. You know, I mean, there you can you can uh, you go see them a couple times. You know, I mean, you do your best. I mean, you try to. You know, figure out. Yeah, I think the biggest thing is just getting guys that want to be here more than anything. You know, and that that's you spend time with them. You can't sit there and obsess over why kids make decisions to go somewhere else. I mean, you you, you get guys that that want to be on your team, and 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 then when they you get them here, you get them. You try to get them better, and you try to get to know them, and you you make sure that the parents at home can can call and check on them and feel good about that relationship. So. Um, you know that that's one thing I think this staff's done a great job of. You know we've 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 identified who wants to be here, and and, and these guys that signed today are all guys that want to be here, and we're gonna <coughs> we're gonna we're gonna coach the heck out of them. You know we're not gonna worry about the guys that 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 didn't want to come here for a variety of reasons. There's because there's all kinds of reasons why guys don't go to specific schools. You know we can elaborate on that but um you know it's just the way it is we'll, we'll coach up the guys we want because they want to be here probably the biggest thing and with the regard to the the 15 states was that an effort to, to kind of go out and plant seeds and grow eventually or is that just where your best guys ended up being that, that widespread yeah it's uh junior college has had something to do with that you know we, we we don't actively recruit north carolina south carolina although we got in there in the past uh you know Mississippi. I mean, those are you know even Alabama a little bit. Those guys, 
you know, those guys surfaced because of the junior colleges that we were recruiting. California, the one came from California, one came from Kansas. Uh, we, we, we wanted to really actively get into Ohio, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Maryland, Virginia, uh, and then we're going to get into Georgia a lot more. Obviously, we're going to be in Florida a lot. We're going we're gonna to spot Texas a good bit. So, uh, you know, our, our database will grow tremendously from, you know, basically today through the end of spring into summer. And then at some point you got to narrow it down for specific reasons, going back to identifying why people don't want to, you know, what, what, what people want to get recruited as and for the reasons they want to get recruited for. And, you know, if it happens to get narrowed down into five states next year, then so be it. But uh, we're not, we're not going to be restricted geographically. Uh, we're we're, we're going to go wherever we need to go to get guys that want to be here. Anyone on this list make you sweat here in the 11th hour or anything that you weren't sure if they were going to sign? <coughs> yeah, 25 of them. <laughs> no, that, that, the seven that were early enrolled, I mean, we, we felt pretty good about those guys heading into today. Uh, you know, we, we worked those seven guys out yesterday and then the other, I guess, uh, 18 guys that signed today. I mean, you never know. I mean, I, we talked to them all. We talked to all 18 of them yesterday. We talked to all 18 of them again today. Uh, there's probably going to be a, a certain amount of red buttoning these guys here for the next few weeks. Cause we're tired of talking to them, and they're tired of talking to us. So uh, I'm glad it worked out the way it did. So. Can you kind of describe what, what this day is like for you guys as coaches? As you, as you said, you talk to them, these players, all the way up to it, including today, and then you sit around a fax machine and wait to see the, the letters. What's What's this day like for you guys? Is it exciting, fun, tense, nervous? Yeah, it's 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 all of the above. I think you know. I mean, it, it's uh, you know, it, it, it's still fun. I mean, you you call they call one last time and they say it's in and you're official and and, and it's good to put closure to it. It, it. It's really good to put closure to it. The the hardest 48 hours as a coach is Monday, Tuesday before signing day. I mean, because there's nothing you can do. It's over. You think you got your numbers hit. Um, you know, you, you, you don't know if they're going to send it back or not, you know, but, uh, you know, we did a heck of a job. I think this staff did a heck of a job of identifying the guys that, that wanted to be here. And, and uh, you know, we, 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 we put a list together last night of 18 people, you know, that we thought were going to sign, and all 18 of them signed. Uh, so I, I can assure you this staff didn't lose sight of the ones that didn't, you know. Again, people go to different schools for different reasons, and, you know, it's it's hard to identify all those, but uh, once you identify them, you you figure out uh, who your guys are and you roll with it. So it's there, it's really it's there's some relief to it and there's some satisfaction to it and some closure to it, which I think we all look forward to. So. You know, lose somebody academically, or how, how do you feel overall about the 25 guys? You have? <coughs> are there many that you're going to have to sweat this summer? There's always guys that you got to keep your eye on. You know, I, I, I don't, you know, we, I court, Coach Dorchester can probably give you a specific percentage. I, I, I know there's, there's a high percentage of them that are already qualified. There's, there, it's not 100. Uh, you know, so there's a handful of guys that we will continue to monitor. Uh, you know, we will get, uh, you know, updates on them from their counselors. Uh, you know, coach of these guys, guys will be, be in touch with their counselors and their parents, and we'll get updated SAT scores and, you know, and, and, and specific uh, updates on that. So, yeah, there's, there's still several of them that we'll have to monitor very closely.